The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Susan Watkin. Thank you guys for joining me this afternoon on our tax, uh, ta well, how to save time during tax season. Um, I'm kind of calling this more on how to make our tax season more efficient and which then ultimately will hopefully save us all time. So we're just going to get started here. I'm going to come out and say this is actually the first uh, webinar I've done like this. Uh, those of you who know me uh, know I, I speak in public a fair bit. So this one's a little bit different for me. I'm used to standing in front of an audience, engaging with you guys, seeing your faces, uh, which helps me determine my, my speaking points, whether I need to move on, do I need to stay more? So, so this is kind of like presenting blind. <laughs> And uh, it's it's different for me, so hopefully it'll it'll still go well. But what I want to do is I want to put out there, like like with most presentations, um, at the end of the presentation we offer a question and answer period. But I, I don't want you to hold on till then because we're going to be talking about some stuff, and I like this to be more engaging. Even though I can't see you, I want you to ask questions. There's the questions box in your um, in the side panel bar. Please feel free to put your questions there. Um, I'll do my best to answer any of them uh, in the order that they come up and as they come up through each slide. So, okay, so don't feel that you have to hold back. Just put it out there because odds are if you're asking, somebody else is asking too. So let's uh, have our, do our best to have our conversation here one way. So, so yeah, so this, this is going to be a bit about creating efficiencies uh, for and during tax season. You know, for those of you that are on board, I'm assuming that either you're, you're either A, you are already a tax preparer, I'm going to use the term tax professional. I like I like that term a little bit better um, because I like to think that we're pros in what we do. And if you're not currently doing taxes right now, maybe you're considering adding taxes and you're thinking like, I'm going to get on board. With this because I've got some business clients or I've got some friends and I want to be getting this uh, getting into taxes because maybe it's going to expand the revenue the revenue earning capabilities of my own company so wherever you are this is beneficial okay some of you might see this and think okay well I, I know all this stuff but you know it, it all bears repeating we all learn better and I think we all learn the best when we learn from each other. So I'm really thrilled to be able to put on this kind of presentation um, for Intuit and I appreciate them getting me to do this. All right, so let's get started. Well, that's me. Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that's all I have to say about that. I'll come up a little bit more. So my my idea here was how can we all make tax season less taxing i know it's a bad pun but i was trying to trying to be witty and and try to come up with something interesting so because we all know tax season is incredibly stressful you know it can be and it, but it doesn't necessarily have to be if we arm ourselves in the right way and that's that has to do a lot with preparation and has to do a lot with um the work that we're going to do and it's also work an awareness of what we have already in our practices like what what are we doing right now in our practice and does it make sense um, you know and then also to when we start the planning you know the planning process so a little bit this is kind of what i want to touch on <clears throat> And I'm going to obviously a little bit of an introduction uh, as we just had a bit of I'm going to talk about you know planning review and that's kind of like a planning process what we go through uh, before tax season starts uh, I also want to talk about you know before tax season during tax season after tax season and at the end I, I kind of put in the questions but like I said questions anytime all right so a bit about me for those of you who don't know me um, and maybe you have I, I did do a, you know some presentations recently at IPBC at QuickBooks Connect and just recently I was on the Knowledge Bureau's uh, winter tax tour so if I've seen any of you that's you know hello again if not this is a bit about me so we have um, so I do have a, a full service accounting firm uh, this is our fifth or sixth year I think in offering taxes um, we do do everything. We do every kind of tax return, uh, trust returns, final returns, um, all the forms, etc. And yes, and we do use Intuit Pro Profile for all of our tax filings. Um, 
you know, so we, I like to, I like to always put that in. I don't claim to be an expert, like the expert. I don't claim to be that this is so easy. And then, you know, it, it is a lot of work and it is really stressful. Um, it's just hopefully, you know, we can get together, we can all share and, and make things a little bit simpler for each other. So let's get into it. So, <laughs> sorry. Uh, that was a bad con and I didn't actually mean to say it, but it's funny. Um, so where I want to start here is the planning. So planning is the core of the tax season. And, and this is this is what will make or break your tax season, making it efficient, making it flow. And I've put it here that it's not too late. And the reason why I say that it's not too late is because if you're starting into taxes, normally, um, normally normally you want to be starting in the fall i know this sounds kind of crazy but uh, you want to be starting in the fall with your planning because you've got a whole there's so much to do especially if you once you you've in this a lot um you understand that there's there's so many different deadlines now i'm saying this and i'm going to be 100 percent honest with you guys i say this and i try i try every year to be tax planning in the fall and we do we do to a point but we have to work. We're all working because I'm assuming that you're all also out there and you're also bookkeepers, you know, and we all have to work everything. Nothing else can stop. So we have to keep uh, keep going on um, the regular work. So but the best part is to be making sure that you are planning. OK, so whether it's in the fall, whether it's at winter time, over Christmas break or right now plan so it's not too late so let's look at it so what i did here was i kind of broke it down for you this is how i look at it so everything i'm telling you today is what i do in my firm so what i do every year what we go through and it does change year over year because there's always something i learn from last year or i've picked up from a colleague and i've seen what they've done and i think to myself mm, if that's what i gotta i gotta do that next year because that that's something i really should have considered um so what i broke it into here for us is an in-depth when it comes to reviewing it's in-depth and general so obviously general is the basic stuff and this is the stuff where you have it's kind of I'm going to say it's on the surface level so we're talking about like the really general things of how how are we going to get the information from our clients okay um, how are we going to collect the documents uh, do we need a checklist how um, do we have the ability to share documents securely because please do not be sending tax documents over email that are not password protected Okay, I see a lot of accounting firms that do this. There's a lot of documentation there. And so, you know, how are you going to share documents securely? How are you going to get signatures securely? You know, uh, planning your deadlines. And I don't mean deadlines. I'm not talking compliance deadlines. That's a whole other animal. I'm talking about your deadlines. Do you have deadlines you want to set for yourself? For example, in my office, it's like, well, I want to be doing our, um, I've got our tax system completely prepared <laughs> in a perfect world, it would be starting January 1st, I'm ready to do what I need to do. Sadly, that did not happen this year, I'll be 100% honest. Uh, I, had, I lost uh, two employees in December, <laughs> so and we've just moved into a new space, so we're kind of a bit behind, so, but fear not, we have, I still have my plan, okay? So I didn't get it to where I wanted it to be, but I know what I still need left to do to get going. So. Also with deadlines, I talk about things like, when are you gonna willing to start taking tax returns? When are you going to stop? Um, do you need to hire staff, advertise, planning? How are you gonna do these taxes? Are people gonna to come to your office? Can you even have people come to your office? So that's that's a, a big thing there, you know? And and then obviously I like to say, who does the work in your office? Is it going to be you or are you gonna have, are you gonna hire somebody, right? So that, like I said, that is really the the surface level of what uh, planning is. I kind of consider that the very, uh, very general amount of, um, of information like I'm planning that we need to do. The more important stuff is the in-depth stuff. And I actually, I actually go through this for myself all the time, like every single year, because one of these years, I might look at this and think to myself, I'm not doing this anymore. Like it's not, 
is it worth it for me? So if you're if you're coming in or you're redoing this again, you know, you it, give it some real thought. Like, you know, number one, what what can you take on? You know, if you're new to doing taxes, do you have a clear view of your company and your organization right now on where it stands and what you can manage to take on as a tax preparer? Because it's going to impact everything. All right. Um, some of the other things, you know, how key, how is that if you say, yes, I'm going to take this on, but how is that going to affect your current workflow? So those of you who also do bookkeeping, so how is doing taxes going to affect it? Well, I can tell you right now, like, and though I know some of you who are on with us and I know you guys are in similar positions as myself is that tax doing tax impacts us greatly because the bookkeeping work can't stop because you have commitments to those clients. So, getting into tax season and whether it's corporate tax returns that can happen anytime during the year, or is it sole proprietorship returns that are happening, you know, in time for June or, or our individuals, it, there's like a good six months out of our year where you need to realize how much this is going to impact the regular work. And is it realistic? You know, there's nothing wrong with saying like this, I just can't do this. You know, for years we had clients asking us to do taxes and whatnot, and it just, it wasn't something that was feasible because the time, you know, the important thing was for us was working with the clients and making sure their books were good, but then we don't want to get, uh, you know, we don't want to lose that part because that's the bread and butter, you know, taxes, I like considering the gravy, right? So especially if you're doing business taxes, you know, it, like I look at that, like it's, it seems fluid. Can I do it? It makes sense because they're already my bookkeeping clients. Then yes, let's do it. But then I have to consider the impact. I need more staff. I need more. Do I need more space? Do I need accessibility? You know, and then a couple of the other points I've got here, how do I even price that? You know, one of the best things you can do if you've never done this before is talk to your colleagues. A lot of us are pretty open um, about uh, how how we price. And to be honest, it's like with anything else, it's like picking your hourly rate. Pricing product and pricing your stuff is, is one of the hardest things you'll do, right? So, but you do need to understand how, how to price that, uh, what's reasonable. Um, the other things that we like to, we need to make sure obviously is in depth, you know, like we've got compliance, you've got insurance, your liabilities, are there new changes? There's, there's so much stuff. So I'm not going to, I think I was, I think I break out a little bit more on this. So I'm not going to talk too much on this slide. Um, but, but yeah, and then I've even got here. One thing I like to mention is collaboration with other accounting professionals. So I know a couple of people out there, um, a couple of, sorry, I just got distracted. <laughs> like a dog with a squirrel, I just saw a chat thing pop up. Um, I know a lot of people who are new coming into the system, and I see this in some of these chat channels or these uh, Facebook groups to say, you know, how should I start? One of the ways I wanna put out there, because this is something I actually did many years ago, was collaboration with other accounting professionals. If you're really new to doing taxes and you're thinking like, well, how am I going to do this? How do I get this started? How do I price? And, you, and, and all of this that I'm talking about, you're kind of thinking like, holy cow, this is like far, far too much. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Align yourself with someone else who is already doing it. Kind of come on board as helping them out. Become their preparer. Become work with them. Or have them be the one that's managing and then they outsource you to do the work. Then you're not necessarily responsible for the full management of the tax season. That falls to somebody who's more, who is more uh, experienced. But then what you get to do is you learn from it. You know, you get to see how another person handles this and, and goes through it. And it can kind of give you that general uh, introduction, that, that easier introduction uh, into tax uh, providing. Okay. Uh -oh. Apologies, I'm just trying to change the slide and it is not changing. I'm just, uh, there we go. All right, so as the tax season begins, that's what we're officially coming into, okay? So I consider it right now because the reason why I consider it right now is it's February, forms. You know, are you guys doing tax forms? Whoever's doing tax forms, we know this all starts now. Um, where we have to start preparing, getting ready for T4s, T5s, uh, if you do any of those. Um, so to me, that's tax season starts 
starts now. And then like me, if any of you else uh, didn't have a chance to get fully into getting your tax stuff organized, well, you got to get it done now, right? So now's the time. Okay, so for us, you know, we're going through our firm processes, our best practices, reviewing what we did last year, um, where we ended last year, and if there's any situations that we needed to change, right? So for, so for me, right now I'm looking at it, who in my office is doing this? So do I, I have, in my office, I have an administrator, she's amazing, and I have a junior tax preparer. You know, and then for my, on my side is making sure that like, do they know what they need to do? So right now they're going through um, their training. So I've put it down here as well, training and development. So there's some really, really great training, um, training organizations that help us with our tax skills, not only just doing something like this and talking with uh, fellow colleagues, but actual, you know, education components, like, you know, you've got Knowledge Bureau, you've got uh, Video Tax News. So we've got all that stuff is this month. So we're doing our profile retraining. We, you know, we do that every single year. And, you know, we go, th we're doing the Video Tax News and Knowledge Bureau because we need to understand how any legislation has changed. Right. So so this is our firm process and getting things together. You know, we're we're right now as well as we're trying to get through our scheduling our workflow. So for those of you who are um, like there's a lot of you on here that I don't know. So but for those of you who are on here and have a bookkeeping practice, you know, I'm presuming that you're going to have you have something in place for your workflow. Well, you need something in place for your tax workflow as well. Uh, recently, um, and I'm going to touch on this a little bit uh, later in the presentation, is some stuff has come up, and I'm sure those of you who use Profile are aware of it, that has allowed, is going to allow us to really separate our workflow for our taxes from our bookkeeping practices, if you do both. And I'm, I'm super excited about it, and I'm going to talk more about it. Um, but it is really important. You know, so you, you need to understand what's going to happen, like section it out. So who's sending out the engagements, let, sorry, engagement letters, who's collecting them, who's connecting with the clients, you know, what are we doing here? Okay. And then, of course, our software. Software is, uh, you know, obviously one of the key things and does it flow with everything else. Um, recently, I was just on, I'm going to take a little bit of an aside. So recently, I, like I had mentioned at the beginning, I was really fortunate enough to to be able to participate um, with the Knowledge Bureau, the T1 tax season tour across Canada. And the thing about the Knowledge Bureau is it's amazing for tax learning, and they really go through every single um, every single line of of the tax, like tax changes, all that type of stuff. So, but what I did with my presentation there was I was talking about the ecosystem of tax and it's something I'm just gonna I don't have it in this deck but it, it because I just did this I wanted to put it out there and it's something for us to think about right is is thinking about our tax preparing our tax system our tax season basically as its own life cycle really so I look at from we've got our bookkeeping the kiss it or circle We've got our bookkeeping, we go over our circle, we've got our tax professional, and then we have our software, and that's the close of our circle. So I consider that our, our tax ecosystem. And I feel we need to kind of flow ourselves around this ecosystem and make, make sure that we have that whole view. So what I'm talking about to you guys today is, is a part of both, is the tax preparer part, but it doesn't, it's not done in its own bubble. It's not in exclusive of bookkeeping it's not if you're doing business taxes sorry I, I know there might be some of you just do t1s um, but it's also it's not exclusive of software it's not exclusive exclusive of bookkeeping or record keeping if it's an individual so I just kind of want to put that out there is that visual is 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 looking at tax season as this this little cycle this little life cycle that we go through um, so Briefly, I want to. I just want to mention. I put this slide up here because some things. If you are the dedicated person, if you are the tax preparer, then obviously you know how awesome you are and what you can do and what you're able to do. But if you're like me and you have employees and you need 
you need somebody, you know, I'm not, uh, I don't want to do taxes all by myself. I need to, somebody else to do the work with me. Um, I also have a lot of other things I want to do. So I, I really want to get, I always like having somebody in here. So for me, my designated tax person, actually it's the person in the picture. Her name is Kimberly. <laughs> She's an employee uh, of mine, amazing. And when it came down to having somebody in in my firm that was going to be working with me um, on taxes is making sure that they have the skill set required for the taxes I'm deciding to do for the company. So you can see now we've got this flow. So you have to understand what you're going to do, what you think you want to do, because then you got to find the right people and the right software, you know, to do this work, right? So I like having a designated person because it gives them. I have one person who perhaps might overall manage this. It, it one one person where it comes to where it comes to this point it's all one person who's focused on what it's doing one person who as I've noted on the slide it's continuity for our clients it's somebody that it's not all over the place it's one person one funnel one person who's accountable they can create their routine they have the structure you know and they overall manage it right so that's the purpose for me having a designated person in this. So I touched on briefly at the original slide there. So with making, getting yourself efficient, it really requires that you understand what you're doing, you know, and because the, as we all know, when we're learning something new, when we're trying to take on a new task, whether it's in bookkeeping or taxes, when we don't know enough, it takes us longer or we get frustrated, right? So obviously what we want to be doing is, we want to make sure that we have the necessary skills ourselves to be even considering this. So as I mentioned before, I don't have them, I didn't put them up here because I didn't get a chance to update my slide, but the, I've got, for example, the Knowledge Bureau for training, Video Tax News for training, and I'm going to pop it. I actually had it prepared here. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back. There you go. Um, I'm going to pop into the chat. I have two links for you guys. Uh, there you go. One is the Knowledge Bureau and one is for Video Tax News. Maybe you already use them, maybe you're fully aware, but if you're not, check them out. These are the two sources of training that we use every year. Video Tax News, <laughs> these guys are actually really funny. They're kind of a, there's some characters for CPAs for sure. Um, and then video and then knowledge bureau is very hands-on a lot of really great information about uh, tax legislation and and understanding how to handle certain um, scenarios that you might come across right and then i look at this education and development is because i think this is the one thing that's going to to decide whether you are a tax preparer or if you are a tax professional Okay, so you need to decide what you want to be. Do you want to just prepare the taxes and off they go and then you're doing what needs to be done for the compliance portion of it? Or do you want to be the tax professional that works with your clients, you know, throughout the year that provides them with the information they need so that next year they've made better tax decisions, right? I'm talking things like understanding, you know, RRSP guidelines, understanding, you know, child tax credits, you know, the implication of, you know, implication of changes to kitty tax, things like that. So it's, you decide what you want to be, the kind of tax person you want to be. Um, but this, the information I just posted you, those links, that's going to help give you that education and put you where you want to be in terms of your tax, uh, your tax offerings in your firm. Um, I just popped up here as well, like a little schedule of a workflow. So this is again understanding. Now this is the compliance schedule, right? So we need to know that that's one of our in-depth. That's one of our in-depth in -depth comments is understanding our compliance, understanding our legislation. And compliance is, an, of course, you got to create your workflow to match these deadlines. Like this is, uh, these are the ones that, you know, you have no choice. Like you've got to get this done. You know, do you want to create your own start-stop date? So this is one of the things that I do is, for example, T4, T forms are February. We don't do anything else tax wise in February. If anybody comes to you and says, oh my gosh, I want to hurry up and get my return done. The CRA is not even accepting T1 generals being filed 
before February 26th. So anybody coming to you, you don't even, it's not even going to get done anyway. And then also you want to make sure you understand that T4 forms, T5s, T4As, they don't come out to the end of February. T3s don't come out to the end of March. So in many situations, depending on the client you have and their um, their tax position and what, they're, what they need to be done, the majority of the, your tax work is not done till April if it's on an individual because you need to wait for those forms to come in um, unless you can be 100% sure that they have nothing else. Uh, but I don't recommend that. Uh, I know we we spend our time just getting prepared and uh, we kind of fly through them then in April. You know, No matter how much people come in and say, oh, I want to do it today, I want my refund, I want my refund, I want to do it correctly and I want to make sure I have the information. So we keep an eye on things like that. So, and again, one, uh, one, this is from, for me to you, obviously like know your limits and set them, be realistic. Like a lot of us want to say, I want to make money. I want to earn, I can take on these clients, but realistically, can you do a hundred T1 general forms? Can you do 500? You know, um, what are your limitations at home? Do you have kids? Do you have, you know, a spouse? Do you have anything else going on? Because don't, it's like with anything else we do. It's like we're notorious in thinking that we can, you know, rule the world and, and, and do everything. I, I'm the same way, but I try learning over years to saying, okay, I have to be realistic as much as I want to do everything I can't. And that's exactly the same thing with knowing your limits uh, with regards to your tax season. So, all of this comes down to scheduling your time, which is making you efficient, which in the end is going to save you time. Because wouldn't it be wonderful if we got to the point where we're in April and we're not working till 10 o'clock midnight every night. We're not working weekends. We can actually flow through tax season with our control. We have control over this and you all have control to do this because you are making the decisions. You are the one who gets to set the, de the decisions on how many people you're going to serve, how many people you're going to push through, who's going to do the work. So by giving this some thought, and you might think, you know, oh, well, this is a whole lot of, yeah, of course we need to organize. Of course we need to do this stuff. But the reality is, is a lot of us don't do this. And we kind of fly by the seat of our pants in tax season and that's when we're working until midnight every night and i don't know for those of you who have also been doing this stuff for years i'm kind of done with that like i don't, i don't want to do that anymore i get cranky and i'm tired and I, I i want to you know i want to manage my company so that's so that's a that's a big thing for me so but that's my personal thing so um all right again Sorry, I'm not exactly the most technologically savvy sometimes with these things. Okay, going back to what I had brought, I mentioned you guys visualize your little tax ecosystem and here we are at the end, closing off our tax ecosystem and that's our software. Um, picking the software that you're going to use, obviously this is an Intuit presentation. I am going to be touching on profile. I'm not gonna get into how to use profile but Profile is the, the tax uh, solution of choice for me and my firm. Um, so that's all I'm going to be talking about today. So, but what I'm putting out to you guys is, you know, when you are deciding to do income taxes and, or if you're coming, you know, if you've already been doing them, maybe you're looking for a change. Maybe you've been using a different tax product. Okay, so selecting the software is, is really important and, and it's for a couple of reasons, not, you know, not just, you know, do I like it? Is it easy? Is it cheap? But I want us to think, think about what this tax software is going to do with us, do for us in terms of making our lives easier, because we're all about that. We all work in these apps. We all work with these online systems. It's about making us more efficient so we can spend time doing the things we want to do, really want to do. Um, when I look at the view of, the tax cycle. One thing I didn't talk about here because we're just talking tax primarily is say bookkeeping or record keeping. We all know that's the beginning. Okay. So that is the beginning of where we all need to be. That is, don't forget that part as part of your planning. If you are doing 
business taxes, sole proprietors, partnerships, corporations, anything. As the tax professional, you also need to make sure, if you're not the bookkeeper, because if you're the bookkeeper, then you, know, you already know how the books are going and how everything looks. But if you're the tax professional and you haven't done those bookkeeping, you still have a responsibility of making sure that that stuff looks good right because that's part of your taxes because your taxes the work you are going to be doing at tax time is only as good as the information that you are provided right so we have the ability to make sure that we have we can get all the information whether it's from our t1 clients using afmr it's whether we're using our for our business clients using their quickbooks accounts you know as the tax pros we want to make sure that we're getting all that stuff and then on the other side of us we want to make sure that we have software that's going to be able to bring it all home right and uh, um, for me in the last uh, talk i just did at uh, the knowledge bureau part of it part of it was as tax professionals what can we do to make this information we're getting better right if it's something that you haven't thought of, it's something like consider consider that as part of your tax planning, start part of your season planning, or even right now. If you're doing taxes for somebody else who's preparing the work, how can you make sure that that is good work, right? Can you support them throughout the year, making sure that their chart of accounts are great? Or if it's an individual, can you make sure that you know you can help them manage their uh, their personal finances, right? How can you make your life easier throughout the year instead of instead of now when they come to us with the shoe boxes, when they come to us with the big boxes of work and it's not arranged because because that's a stressful thing to do. That's stressful for us to get at, right? So then as we sorry back to uh, our software selection because it's the same thing. Is our software that we're choosing to use for tax season going to help bring all this home for us? Not only is it going to make our lives efficient, but is it going to bring in all that, whether it's, you know, personal, personal uh, finance stuff and, or especially business stuff. Primarily in my company, we deal with a lot of sole proprietor tax returns, partnership tax returns tax returns and corporate tax returns, okay? Uh, the T1 generals that we, we do are primarily for the employees of the corporations that we work for. So we're not, we don't go out there and do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Um, but that doesn't change what, how we do the work. It doesn't change, you know, how we get the information from them or the software that we use. Just, you know, we've just chosen to do, to be that kind of, that's our focus. So with that in mind, when you're thinking about what you're using, if you guys are all already using Profile or if you're using Tax Expert or if you're using TurboTax or, or whatever you're using, is it going to do for you what you need it to do to make your life easier? Okay. Is it going to keep you efficient? Is it going to keep you organized? You know, ultimately, if you want to grow a huge tax practice, is it going to make you competitive because you've got this awesome software that does so much for you? You know, um, for obviously, we're, you know, this was a, an Intuit, Intuit sponsored uh, webinar. So I'm going to assume most of you are using QuickBooks products, QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Desktop. So we want you obviously want a software that's going to integrate with that and uh, make it easier to pull in that information. And for those of you that are the bookkeepers that are also going to be doing, um, also going to be doing the taxes, well, is your, are your books set up to flow through with your tax mapping? Is it organized? All that kind of stuff, right? So you want this to software to be able to grow with you and expand with what you want it to do. So, oh, I actually just touched on that. So for example, for those of you who do are using QVOA and are using QuickBooks Desktop, as I said, I'm a firm that uses Profile. And part of the great thing about Profile is the importing from QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Desktop. Now, for those of you who haven't done this and don't use this or are not sure how this is actually done, I'm going to put out there and say this only works well if the books are done well and by that I don't mean just the bookkeeping but they have to be set up properly so if you're um, like with desktop they have the tax line mapping you have to do and with QuickBooks Online we thankfully if you pick the proper type for your account it tax line maps for you which is awesome you know um, so that's part of our software part of our chat how are we on time? We're doing pretty good. I'm just gonna have a quick check. I thought I saw a question pop in, so I'd love to 
let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger and take a, a minute and answer if I can have a question, answer a couple of questions. Um, oh, that, that's a great question. Okay, somebody asked, are we going to go over the tools that you use for those things, collecting documents and signatures? You know what? I was, and it was probably on one of my notes, and I just skipped right past it. Um, and I will. I'm going to happily talk about this. So we're coming up to a point um, in the presentation, there's the next slide that's going to tell you how I've kind of my, the workflow of my practice has changed with the with my tax software. So I'm going to touch on it at the same time. Um, so, but there was a question here, where to get information for training courses or seminars? Now I did post in the chat, I posted a link for the Knowledge Bureau, which is educa tax education. There's also, actually they have a bookkeeping component as well, so check that out. Video Tax News is also there as well, some amazing seminars. Um, so, but yeah, it's okay, that's great. Just wanted to quickly touch on a couple of those questions. And I will, tell you guys a little bit about what I use. So right now for firm processes, so it was actually a good time because I've got them posted right here. The firm processes and best practices that I use for those things I specifically told you guys to look at when it comes to general stuff, uh, in-depth stuff. So for me, we are, let me just, I'm gonna, if I could easily go back to the slide but I'll at least look on my slide. So if I'm looking at things like document collection, we've got some new stuff coming up in profile, not coming up, it's out, it's there, it's great. Um, and that's called Hub and Link. I'm gonna to touch on that in the next slide. When it comes for secure document sharing, I use a program called ShareFile. A lot of people use ShareFile, a lot of people use, I apologize, I don't know the names, but there's some really great ones out there. And you want to find one that is um, encrypted, it's secure, it has a lot of uh, abilities to not only send, but to receive, to track, to sign. And that's what I use with ShareFile. So this gives me the ability to have send uh, final tax returns securely to my clients to store them. So then that way I'm not sending anything in an email, okay? Um, some of the the primary tools of so my workflow tools I use are now in profile which is great uh, for those of you who've used profile in the past or still using it you know client explorer is always good but now we've got what is called hub which is kind of client explorer 2.0 uh, we like to say um, in my oh, sorry there was I just want to get the clarify that finish that question how do I share secure documents? So somebody had asked me, how do I share the secure documents with the staff? Well, we have a secured server within our company. So obviously everything is, is secured within that organization. Um, but this is one of the reasons why I keep it as one person, preferably who kind of manages the taxes in the office, because it's their there's some control over that then there's some accountability about that there's some regulation and continuity not just for the clients knowing that they have this one face that's going to deal with them but also for the staff because then they know they have one person to go to who who oversees the tax stuff right it's okay to have people who do all like process and help but it's nice to have one person at the end that it, that kind of oversees that so when it comes to sharing documents well within our office, this person divvies out the work, you know, so it's not like we're sending it across, you know, across the internet. But as I mentioned, we do use ShareFile. I have an employee that works in uh, New Brunswick. So why did I say New Brunswick? Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. And so she, so our, we use ShareFile to share everything that way because it's bank encrypted software. So it's the same thing within our company that we would do outside of our company with our, with our clients. Um, so yeah, so again, during tax season, we're preparing our returns, previous years, auto fills, and I'm just gonna, I wanna get to the fun part. So I consider this fun, it is, you know, it's, you know, it's, this changed how I looked at my tax season. And this was just this year. So when it first came out, it's first, uh, first iteration of it, it's, this is called, um, well, this is a picture of Link. I apologize, I was, I want to see if I don't have the proper picture of my proper picture of my hub up here. So 
profile uh, has within it something called Hub and something called Link. So for those of you who've used Profile, Hub is, like I said, the next extension of, of uh, Client Explorer. What it does is allowing us to manage um, basically where, where our clients are in, in the tax process. So for example, when you, um, you do a carry forward your return, so, you, so you'll have a list of all the clients that, and I do apologize, I don't have a picture of it in this slide. You have a, a list of all your clients that have been carried forward. Well, what Hub allows us to do is see in one place who's carried forward, where they are, make some comments, are they almost completed, how has it been sent? But what it also allows us to do is connect it to something that's called link. And what link is, link is that connection to our clients. And what I, this is what I meant when I said it's changed the practice. So earlier in the session, I said to you guys about workflow. Well, I use workflow for my clients. So I have, I think I have a slide here. I'm gonna see if I can show you and I'll come back to this one. So, for example, I use ShareFile and I use um, Jet, uh, Jetpack Workflow. So I have workflow for my, for my practice. So within my practice, I've got you know, my bookkeeping and I can manage all sorts of things in that regard. Well, when Profile came out with this, I looked at it, this is the opportunity as to kind of separate the two because sometimes I want to I want to give somebody else the ability to manage the taxes and this hub and link actually helps us do so without having to have one of my employees have another license to profile which is what you require when you want to be using client explorer so what hub will allow hub and link allow us to do is now we connect to our clients virtually so gone are the days of the paper if you have clients that can ha handle this so what this does is it sends a connection to our client and says look we want to connect with you we want to get all your tax stuff at the same time it's going to send out a digital engagement letter for us that you get to design they can sign it digitally which is amazing we get to send out um, our checklists digitally. So instead of waiting for them to do, I'm sure many of you, I, I do, every year we have a paper document that they have to tick off. You know, did you, you know, do you have foreign property that's worth over X amount of dollars? Did you sell, did you sell a principal resident? And I don't know about you guys, but every year they come back half done and nobody's, <laughs> and I'm always getting to the point of doing tax returns and, and you know, I'm looking at them and I'm thinking like, this is there's got to be a better way for this because this is ridiculous you know there's so much information that we require to do income tax returns so i'm happy to say that there is now this isn't i'm not here to sell the product i'm just telling you how i'm taking now my practice of creating uh these workflows and making it more efficient because here we go with link this is the version that the client is going to see so they just create access their login and it's great you can see on the left hand side they see their email the middle is one where they have their sign in and the bottom right is what it looks like when they're doing tasks so they get a whole bunch of tasks and i think it's great now i want to show you on our end we have what's called pro connect link so now this is your management hub for your tax practice and talk about making your life easy talk about saving you time it is one space every client based on tax here it it will track what you've sent them so if you've sent your engagement letters you've sent your checklists you've asked them for documents this is where your person in your office is managing taxes if it's not yourself but if it's yourself it's in one space and you can look at this anywhere it is virtual it is online so you can be anywhere and seeing where things are going in terms of your tax work okay so what you're going to do is what i do is i'm looking at this as, as this is fantastic it sends auto reminders now my administrator now she who is not a tax preparer can help me manage this and take that off now i've just saved a whole whack load of time that i can now put into being that tax professional where i can be offering the advice that my clients require i can spend more time with the clients you know versus always hunting them down for the documents this, this system now sends auto reminders. If they haven't uh, answered your question within a certain period of time, it'll just keep emailing them. I love that. 
now I don't have to do it. It's one place that collects everything from your clients. Uh, so my, my administrator, she goes in here and she's the one who's watching this, seeing that, oh, they finally sent in that, uh, you know, assigned T183 or the there's the T1013 assigned in here, engagement letters done or that missing T4. What I like as an employer, as somebody who manages a tax practice, is that I can look at this wherever I am. If I'm away, if I am offsite somewhere else or I'm at a conference, I can be logging in here and I can be saying, how are things going? Are we getting what we need to be processing, getting all this work done? So before when I mentioned about the secure sharing system for documents for my clients, finding ways to do this, what Profile and Intuit have done for us has given us this ability to re totally reinvent our workflow with our taxes and ultimately save us time. So if you are using Profile this year, if you have not tried it out, please do. There's tons of training on it on the Profile website. So, I, oh, I just wanted to share, this is kind of the things that I use, again, for efficiencies. Did we receive our information, results, and how we do um, everything that we're going to do throughout our season? Now, we got to slowly wrap it up, and then hopefully I'll answer it. I'll have a look and see if there's any more questions. Um, at the end of tax season, now you're all done, you know. You're, you're, you've got to collect those T183s. You know, you've got to make sure that if you're doing corporate tax returns, have you received payment? You know, um, have you, you know, who's going to be following up? So now, like I was just showing you guys, when we discovered that, when we figured, sorry, figured out, when we learned this year um, and we were able to play with the hub and link application within Profile, it did change how it's going to work. Because now I don't have to have a, uh, a tax professional spend their time, which is going to be obviously more expensive for me as an employer. I can have my administrator be involved as well because she can be involved now with collecting this stuff, checking it off the list, making sure everything is everything is there because I can set her up with that. Um, the other part about you know with getting through your tax season is I know this this might not necessarily be about time savings for this year, but think about this for next year and saving time and efficient making yourself efficient for next year. This is what did you learn about this year? If you take nothing from what you've done with your taxes this year into next year, it's a disservice to the clients, okay? It's hard, I understand, and you have to learn. This is where our education comes in and our experience comes in. But you have to make sure that you, what you've discovered about your tax clients is that you're going to roll that into next year for them. You're going to talk to them about, okay, well, this is what we saw this year. How can we change this for next year? What is this going to mean for next year? You know, what are, what is the carried forward for next year? What, what are possible changes that they're going to need to be prepared for for next year, right? So especially when it comes, you know, not even especially, it's for any of your clients, your individuals, your T1s, your T2s, your T2125s. Um, create a work plan for these people. If it's just, if they're T1 people, fine, you might not have an ongoing annual work plan. But that doesn't mean you can't have a meeting that says, you know what, let's touch base in six months to see where you're sitting in terms of your investments or in terms of your RSP. Obviously, this is up to you if you decide this is what you, what you want to do. But this is going to save you time for next year because you're going to be prepared and you're going to have clients that are prepared for next year as well. Use that end of season, that completed tax return. Give yourself the opportunity to, you know, to talk to your your clients and see what can you do over the next year with them because there's no reason why they can't be maybe more revenue generating for you you know maybe this is something else you can do for them throughout the year to help manage their finances maybe this is somebody who decides to start up a business mid-year and you're the one that they're going to talk to now because you've created that relationship with them you've got that knowledge base and you're able to provide that to them so with your business clients you really have to use this because especially if you're the bookkeeper if you're not the bookkeeper but you you still want to create a work plan and share it with that bookkeeper to make sure that the ultimate goal is the best for the clients yes this is about us making our lives easier during tax season being tax efficient saving time um, but we all want to be in business and we all want to grow our businesses presumably so the best thing you can do for yourself is is to show them that you are that expert that you are that tax professional 
and that you are going to see them through the year so that next year, you know, they, their tax, uh, any tax implication or tax changes are going to, uh, you've got it covered that you're on top of it and you're gonna watch it with them and assist them in what you can do. And then next year when you start planning again, all this is already done. So you're ready to go on that part. So you don't have to do a review of where everybody sat at the end of last year. So for those of you who are new and just starting out this year, I'm just gonna give you a tip. Please just start slowly. There's no rush to get involved. Really be careful, really be cautious about what you take on and you know, you have the control over how much you do. It does not have to be a crazy tax season. You guys have the control over how much you take on, okay? And I'm gonna just double check. So thank you everybody for letting me do this. It was a little weird. Uh, I kind of felt like I'm sitting here talking to myself, <laughs> but I really hope you got something out of it. Um, those of you who know me or don't even don't know me, um, I am on a lot of the groups. So let me just go so you can always chat with me there. Okay, so let's see. Um, <laughs> so sad we don't have it in French. Hello, Andre. Como se va? <laughs> yes. Um, where you get the Pro? Uh, no, actually, okay, so Pro Connect it is not, you do not pay for it. It is through profile. Get in your profile. It's part of profile. You just have to get your hub set up. And then as soon as you set up your first link client, then you set up profile connect link. Okay, get to the profile.intuit.ca website. Uh, somebody's asking me, don't you hold off filing tax return? Of course, absolutely. You do not file that tax return until that T183 is in your hands. So normally when I, yes, okay, so my statement was kind of in my slide. That's normally just collecting them, getting them filed, because that's what we do. We wait till all of them come through, then we get the go ahead from our administrator saying this is, actually, we even wait till payment too, you know, so she says, okay, T183 received, tax returns been paid for, off it's filed, okay. Um, <clears throat> what are my process for best practices when tax return is complete and ready for filing with regard to having T13? Okay, so that's what, yeah, so for us, my best practices is, is everything is done, the tax return is ready to go. We, we send it obviously for review to a client, we send it with the T183, we advise with our invoice, so the client comes back to us and they say approved, signed T183, here's payment, then we file. That's our practices. Some people might do it differently, but obviously I'm not filing it without that T183 because that's my compliance obligation, absolutely, and I'm not getting in trouble for that. Just like our signed T1013s, everybody, yes, we can file those, e-file those through profile, but you better make sure you've got those signed because CRA is coming down hardcore on e-filers and make sure you've got copies of all of that uh, in place. I used to file tax returns after the T183s, maybe before payment. I only do that if it's somebody I trust, but you know, once bitten, twice shy. You know, I'm not uh, going to do that too often. Um, I sorry, somebody just asked here. All the info I see online seems to be U.S. based. What information and uh, what do you mean? I'm not sure what that's clarifying. Um, <laughs> yes, somebody else is saying uh, it's a good reminder to hurry up and get organized now. Oh, agreed. And I'm uh, getting back onto it. Finally got some new staff hired, getting back into the organization. Because you know what? We do taxes because we like doing taxes, guys. Enjoy it, right? You know, if you don't like it, don't do it. It's not, uh, it's, you know, you want to enjoy what you're doing. Um, uh, compliance. Oh, compliance. That's education. You've got, you need to get yourself understanding on the CRA websites, go to the CRA website, the websites and talk, punch in deadlines. It's gonna to talk to you about all the deadlines, all the tax filing deadlines, whether T1, T2125, uh, T2, you know, T2s are based obviously on the corporate year ends. Um, but uh, compliance comes in understanding what your obligations are as a tax professional. So you've got deadlines to the, to the government, but you also have, other things that you need to have. So you're gonna to have to, I would highly recommend taking some courses, understand what is required of you, and then yeah, talking to other other pros, right? So, um, and I think kind of we had a few, several duplicates. So um, I'm just gonna, I think we've kind of covered it, but yeah, I'm on QBHQ, and if everybody, anybody feel free to, you know, connect with me there. And if you have any other questions, I'm always happy to talk tax. It's uh, 
for some reason still like it every year. I don't know. It's one of those things, right? And we're, you know, we're great. You know, we got to, it's a good revenue stream for your company if that's what you're going to do. But just make sure that you are prepared because you've got the control on how stressful this is going to be for you guys. So just, uh, so yeah, so just be prepared. And I think that is it. And thank you everybody who said thank you. I appreciate that. That was really nice. Like I said, it's uh, my first uh, online webinar and hopefully I'll see some of you guys in person when uh, perhaps at IPBC or QB Connect next year, or maybe even at the Knowledge Bureau, there's a bunch of courses that I'm hoping to be involved in again with them. So get out there and get involved and, and maybe there'll be some more events on QBHQ. Uh, last question, we need that e-file. Oh yes, you need an e-file or number. <laughs> and you should, if you've already had one last year, you should have been renewing it already for this year. So if you haven't done that, you get on that. Okay, thanks again, everybody. Um, and I do believe that the presentation is being recorded. Um, I'm just, I just saw a note here on that. The presentation is being recorded and it will be available for viewing after the event. I don't know how long, but it will be. All right, so check out the Knowledge Bureau, check out Video Tax News and uh, talk, to your, talk to your colleagues, okay? Otherwise, happy taxing and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you again, everybody for joining me.